tele mosun tele brakata le basu tali araba sin tele bos le brakaza bosun de le de brokotolo le brakada le bosun tolo le brakeke le bosun tolo le brakada le basanda larea le brakada mosun tolo le brakada bosun tolo le brakada le brosun tolo le brakada le bos le brake kabosun tolo le brake tali masun tolo le brakanta le bosun tolo lea le brakada bosun te le prosun te le brakata le de le de bosun tolo lea Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Blessed be your name, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Thank you. 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 Leka koso prako talima santa liba kandala hende lebo sun talia. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Blessed be your name, Almighty God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. This evening, um, I want to do a short thought and prayers on the theme restoration. Restoration restoration um as i was praying and preparing for uh the prayers the lord reminded me the story of samson in the book of judges judges chapter 16 uh, i'm just going to read through uh a certain part of it you know i'm not going to talk about the whole story but the scripture here in judges chapter 16 when the Bible talks about the fact that um, this man called Samson uh, was a very uh, powerful man. He was born uh, in Nazarene, somebody whose head was not shaven, which means that he was dedicated to the Lord. He was dedicated to the Lord from birth. So, but there's a problem with Samson Samson was undisciplined. Samson was an undisciplined boy. Uh, he just does what he likes. He hangs out with people that he's not meant to hang out with. He even went to marry from a tribe that God had, had warned them they should not marry from them. You know, when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, God said something to them and said, God said, you should not marry out of their children why because they will turn your heart away from the lord but it's in such same camp that samson uh went to to go and begin to uh, marry into or you know begin to uh, make, make acquaintances and obviously the word of the lord never returns to god void it means that by hanging out with that woman uh, um, then samson's power was found that the woman took all the power away from him and Samson was captured up until that time Samson was not captured now why is this important because Samson during the time when Samson the story about Samson was being was written it was a time in Israel when they had no king now here's the background story God brought the of Israel out of Egypt by his own mighty hand and God appointed them um you know um the prophet the prophets and the priests you know because god says to 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 them you shall be a kingdom of priests unto me which means they are meant to be uh led by god you know through the priest who's here from god and tell them what's about to happen but the children of israel began to compare themselves to the amorites and the ammonites they began to look at the hands of flesh and they want to be led by a king and god says to them you and if you get a king among from among your people he's going to sell your children he's going to malign he's going to treat you badly they, they, they refuse they say we want to be want to have a king just like the rest of the world this is a, a this is a type of like a believer who wants to be led the same way the world is led instead of being led by the way of god and god says when you follow the way of the world he's going to land you in trouble the Bible says all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the height of pride of life, they are not from God, they are from the devil. 
right? But anyway, cut long story short, they decided to do that. Okay, but before they started having um, the concept of a king, they had the concept of judges. They had the concept of judges, and a judge is someone who uh, is meant to uh, essentially um, just stand in the gap. You know, just stand in the gap. So, and that's how this was a season when they had judges. Okay, so now. Samson was one of those people that God raised up as a judge. So God will raise up somebody from, from a, a family that will be that will rise to prominence, you know, and that will help the children of Israel to overcome the enemy. Samson was raised up for such a time as this, but Samson was unruly. So as I was meditating and praying and pondering in my heart, the Lord reminded me about how He restored Samson. And this is a beautiful story of grace that no matter how much you have lost, for example, you might be here today, you might say, I have lost so much money this year, or I have lost so much opportunity this year. Or you might look at yourself and compare yourself to somebody who may be the same age as you, and the person may have done something that you haven't done. And you may you may even feel a sense of envy or jealousy or thing, a tinge of regret. And the Lord is sending me here this evening to say, the Lord is the restorer. The Lord is the restorer. The Bible says the year that the palmer worm and the canker worm have hidden, the Lord is able to restore. The Lord is able to restore. Praise God. So God is able to restore that which was lost. The Bible says that God has sent Jesus to restore or to recover all that is lost. So whatsoever the enemy has stolen from your life, whatsoever the enemy has tried to steal from your life, whatsoever the enemy has tried to take away from you, I pray over your life and I pray over my life that by the function, by the, by the function power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, by, by, the, by the power of the blood of Jesus, that restoration will come to you. Now, there is a, there's a law under the old covenant that says when somebody steals from you and you catch that person, the person will restore a sevenfold time. The person will restore a sevenfold time. So I pray for you. Whatever it has been lost, Whatever has been lost, whether it is an opportunity or time or money or achievement, whatever it is, the Lord God, our restorer, will restore that back to you a sevenfold time. Will restore back to me a sevenfold time in the name of Jesus. So, Samson is our core topic today because when you look at his life, he was dedicated from the womb. He was called a Nazarene. He knew that the anointing of God was also upon his life. But Samson went astray to the point where Samson, quote and unquote, lost his power. Samson lost his power. So now, but the power of Samson was in the hair of his head. This power of Samson was in the hair of his head. So eventually when the, the, the lady that she married into, who was against God, right, uh, treat Samson for Samson to tell her uh, his, his power, Samson said, my power is in my hair. My hair has not been shaven all the days of my life. So Samson was put to sleep by this lady. Maybe they had love. Maybe you know they had they made some have some nice time, and Samson fell asleep. And then the the woman cut off the hair of Samson. And Samson now, not knowing that the power of God had left him, when the Philistines showed up to come and arrest him, and the woman said, "Samson, Samson, Samson, the Philistines are upon you!" All of a sudden, what happened? Samson thought that he had the power, and Samson pulled himself like this. And the power was no more. Samson was caught, thrown into prison, and guess what happened? You know, Samson was led captive. So God then reminded me and said, I am the God who restored Samson. And the reason why the story of Samson is because listen, you are under grace. You are under grace. 
God is not counting your sin or your mistakes or whatever against you. But you may have been here. You may have done something that is so bad. You thought, oh man, God is not able to restore. But if God could restore something, then you know that the God of restoration is for you. The Bible says in Judges chapter 16, verse 28, Samson called upon the name of the Lord. Yeah, let, actually, let me start from um, verse 25. Samson was brought into the house of these people that have caught him, and they want to start making him, they made him a sport. You know, they were having a jibe at him. Now, remember, now they cut off his hair, so he had no hair, he had no, the, the source of his strength had gone, right? So, the Bible says in verse 25, when they were in high spirits, these are the people that caught him. They put him in the in in their house. They put him on house us house arrest, and they bound they bound him to the wall. It, it was a, it was let it was a, it was a captive, all right. Now you could, you could call him as the lawful captive. Somebody was taken captive because of what he had done. Now the Bible the Bible says that even the law, law, t- lawful captive shall be set free hallelujah so when they were in high spirit they called and said call for something so that he may amuse us so they called something out of prison and he entertained them they made him stand between the pillars then something said to the boy who held him by the hand let me feel the pillars on which the roof of the house rests so that i may lean against them now the house was full of men and women all the Philistine lords were there, and on the flat roof were about 3,000 men and women who looked on while Samson was entertaining them. So they had 3,000 men and women looking on, on Samson as Samson was made a sport by the Philistine. Now remember, Samson had, had his power had left him. He knew his power had left him. It, but when you got caught, he didn't know his power had left him. He didn't know that they cut off his hair. He, he wanted to be braggadocious and stood up like this. All of a sudden, this found that he had no power. He got caught, got put in prison. So something had been shamefaced. Something had gone astray. So this is the story of somebody who was walking with God, but just went, he went astray. And the person now has been become a subject of the de- demolition power of the enemy. But guess what happened? God said to me this today, God said today, I am the one that restores something and whatever you have lost, I am the God who can restore, who will restore them for you. So Samson now was in the in the amaze and he was entertaining them. Now guess what happened? Then Samson called to the Lord God and said, People of God, I want you to understand that what is happening here. This is Samson under the old covenant. Samson had an inferior covenant. But people of God, Samson understood something. That, that our Lord God is God who is full of mercy and compassion. Samson understood something that God is the God who is full of mercy and compassion. I don't know what it is that you may have done. I don't know what mistake you may have wrought in your life. I want you to know that the goodness and the mercies and the kindness of God endure forever. I want you to understand by the power of the Holy Ghost that you cannot be separated from God ever. That God is always in your corner. When Samson called on the name of the Lord, he said, Oh Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me just this one time oh god and let me take vengeance on the philistines for my two eyes that they have removed samson took hold two middle spot pillars on which the house rested and braced himself against them one with his right hand and the other with his left and samson said let me die with the Philistines. Now, I want you to understand, if Samson had not said, let me die with the Philistines, I'm 100% sure God will have saved him. God will have saved him. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he stretched out with all his might. He collapsed the support of the house, and the house fell on the Lord, and all the people were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he had killed during his life. So then his brothers and his fathers, the entire tribal household came down, took him and brought him up and they buried him in the tomb of Manoah, his father. 
which was between Zora and Eshtaol. So Samson had judged Israel for 20 years. Now, how do we know Samson was classed among the faithful? Because in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, the book of Hebrews 11 is a book that is talking about the house, the, 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 the roll call of faith. When we look here in Judges and uh, Hebrews 11, 32, we see that, um, let's go there. Hebrews 11, 32, we speak that Samson's name was listed among those whom the Bible declared as the faithful one. The Bible talks about, and what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, about Barak, about Samson, about Jephthah, about David, Samuel, and the prophet. It's to, and the context of this text is talking about faith that works. It says, faith is the confidence in what we hope for, the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Those who had gone ahead of us were commended based on what? On faith. They were commanded in the fact that they trusted God when it didn't make sense. They were commanded to know to, to because when all hope seemed lost, they trusted the one who was, who was and is and remained the hopeful one. They trusted the one who is the hope of, of the nations. They trusted him who is called the faithful king. Because of that, the Bible says, Samson, by the act of him calling upon the Lord when he was weakest, Calling upon the Lord when he knew he had nothing to, to expect or nothing to give. When he would call upon the Lord, when he knew he did never qualify and he could never qualify, regardless of what he had done, if as the Father, he could call upon the name of the Lord and he would say, Father, Lord, strengthen me one more time. Samson's name was written here as somebody who depended on the Lord. So the Lord sent me here this evening as we begin to pray is about the fact that the Lord is the one who shall restore whatever it is that you have lost. God is the God of restoration. God is the God of restoration. So, Joel chapter 2 verse 25, the Bible says, God is able to restore lost years. God is able to restore lost years. The Bible says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has hidden. The years that the swarming locust has hidden. The years that the palm worm has hidden. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this evening, Almighty God, that if there are opportunities that we have lost, it doesn't matter what the opportunity may seem like, Father, we thank you that, Lord, you are the God who restores. Now, I thank you, Almighty God, that you are restoring opportunities. You are restoring opportunities. You are restoring opportunities. You are restoring opportunities. It might be investments that have gone sour. Father, I thank you that you are restoring. It might be relationships that have gone sour. Thank you, Lord, that you are restoring even in this season. Lord, we thank you, Almighty God, that your restoration is at work now in the lives of your children, in our lives. Thank you, Almighty God, that you are the God who restores. You are the God who restores. We thank you, Almighty God, that the years that we may have lost in any area of our lives, it doesn't matter what the word may play in our mind. I say, oh, you should have done that when you are this. You should have done that when you are that. Father, I thank you, Lord, that your God will restore us. And we thank you now that you are restoring, Almighty God, opportunities for us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17 says, I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal. Yesterday, I was in a session recording a podcast with a lady and I spent two and a half hours talking to this lady and she shared with me stories that taught, a story that touched my heart. She was in this journey for many years where she was she gave birth to this boy with sickle cell and I understand the sickle cell thing because I have lost a brother. My stepbrother, the one I was born after, died at 24 or 23 because he was born with sickle cell anemia. But this woman shared a story with me yesterday about how God was able to heal this his son, uh, son rather, through the scientific approach that cost $2 million and she never had to pay a penny for it. 
and the boy now has got his his uh, his stem cells replaced. You know, now he's living a wonderful life. For the past one year, he's never had any episode at all. Now, this is the God who is able to restore health. If there's any area part of your life where you believe I need healing, it might not be for you. It might be for a friend. It might be forever. Here, I want us to begin to declare, Father, you are the Lord who restores. I decree divine health upon my life. I decree divine health upon my bones. I decree divine health upon my ankles. I decree divine health upon my muscles. I decree divine health upon my brain. I decree divine health upon my eyes. I decree divine health over my body. Because Lord, you are the restorer. I think you know that you are restoring health unto me. You are restoring health unto me. The Bible here says, I will restore health unto you and your wounds I will heal. Father, I thank you, O Lord, because by the strap made of Jesus, we have been healed. By his stripes we have been healed lord now father we receive by faith oh god even the healing power the healing virtue of the lord jesus christ causing through our veins and our bones and our marrows and our ligaments and tendons almighty god we thank you almighty god for the work that you are doing right now blessed be your name for this restoration lord we give you praise you are the god who has divinely provided healing by the death the burial the resurrection of jesus christ lord so now in the name of jesus christ by the provision of the blood of jesus we lay hold on divine health in the name of jesus christ we speak healing now father over our children that, that, that require it we speak healing almighty god over our family members that require this we declare by the power of the holy ghost that the same power that raised jesus christ from the dead dwells in our body that power that is in our body is given life now to our body is giving life to our organs in the name of jesus christ i decree over your life that your pancreas is okay that your liver is okay that your lungs are okay that your kidneys are fine in the name of jesus your eyes i see well all is working well for you in the name of jesus father i thank you almighty god the bible says the son of righteousness shall arise with healing on his wings thank you for your healing power in the name of jesus father we thank you father we give you praise blessed be your name father in jesus christ we pray god is able to restore deep-seated wounds god is able to restore healing to deep-seated wood he's able to essentially cause deep-seated wounds to be taken away what does that even mean there are times when we have been wounded by rejections of the past we have been wounded by relationships we have been wounded by people that will put our trust in that they just throw it down on the ground and that wound becomes like a sore in our heart that at times may try to cause our attention to go in the wrong place the bible says god is the god who does the healing i want us to begin to say father almighty god if there are wounds in my heart that i may not even know that that, that may seem to want to fester that the enemy want to stand put my attention on lord today i relinquish today i relinquish today i release father in the name of jesus christ i thank you almighty god because you said i should guard my heart with all diligence for heart of my heart the the time is the boundaries of my life father therefore today i thank you almighty god that your shield is protecting my heart from every infiltration of the enemy in the name of jesus thank you for your healing power thank you for your grace thank you for your might bless be your name father in jesus name we pray psalm 51 verse 12 says restore to me the joy of your salvation uphold me with a willing spirit what does it mean to be upheld by god it means there are times when you have situations in front of you you don't know how to do it you don't even know the way to go about it but the god who is our upholder is able to uphold you at that point in time god just upholds god just strengthens you he strengthens you from the inside out you know i don't know about you you know at times you know i maybe i have some things i need to do i don't figure out how do i go about this thing you just begin to say father i thank you that i have the wisdom of god but i thank you that i'm seated together with christ in the heavenly places but i thank you that you never leave me nor forsake me as i begin to make this confession all of a sudden i dare start to come left right and center why because god himself dwells on the inside of us this verse says 
is God is able to give joy. Now, here is an amazing thing. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost, which means that joy is in your spirit. The joy of the Lord is in your spirit. And all those begin to affirm, Father, I say, Father, I am joyful. Father, I am joyful. I am joyful because your spirit is in me. I am joyful because you are with me. I am joyful because you are in me. I am joyful because you are my strength. I am joyful because you are with me. I am joyful because you are in me. I am joyful because you are with me. I am joyful because you are all around me. Father, I thank you, Almighty God, that your joy is my strength. Your joy is my strength. Your joy is my strength. So today I choose joy. I choose joy in the name of Jesus. I choose joy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, this next scripture, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, I want to explain it properly because at times people go and misunderstand and um, and basically pray wrong. Now, the context of 1 Peter 5, 10 is talking about suffering for righteousness' sake. It's talking about how if you have gone to preach the gospel, and they come around and burn your house down. That is part of the package. That's kind of thing that we know is part of what we, we are going to get in this life. The Bible says, in this life, you shall suffer persecution. So, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. First Peter 5.10 says, And uh, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, we himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. He's talking about the fact that if we have gone through certain type of suffering, that God is able to restore us, suffering for righteousness sake. For example, I know before that my wife has tried to preach some times back to somebody in Scotland and while she was at work and somebody was going through some mental breakdown, she said, can I pray for you? And the person took up a whatever and reported and he said, hey, sorry, you can't stay here. And she left. But immediately God provided something else. So that is essentially restoration when you suffer for righteousness sake. So here, I want us to begin to Father, I thank you that your grace is more than sufficient for me in the name of Jesus. Strengthen me, O oh God, to be able to stand up for you when I need to stand up for you. Thank you, Almighty God, that your grace is sufficient for me. Strengthen me, O God, to stand up for you when I need to stand up for you. In the name of Jesus, Father, I receive strength now to be able to be authentic, to be able to be authentic, to be able to stand for you when I need to stand for you. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, Almighty God, that you are God who is the giver of joy that your joy is now helping me to know that working with you is all right that even in this life we may face persecution but we have overcome the world thank you almighty god help us almighty to carry the consciousness of, of the overcoming life father we give you praise in jesus name we pray isaiah chapter 61 verse 7 says where there was shame god will give double portion of wonderful things Instead of this honor, you will rejoice. That God will give you double portion in your new land and you shall have everlasting joy. That is a pro that's a prophetic prayer. What essentially says, you shall have double portion, double portion of honor, double portion of blessing, double portion of, of grace, double portion everywhere you go. And God says, you will have everlasting joy. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we receive double portion of great things, multiple blessings in the name of Jesus, multiple blessings, Almighty God. Thank you, Father, that we are blessed in the morning. We are blessed in the afternoon. We are blessed in the evening. We are blessed everywhere. Thank you for your joy in our heart. Thank you for your joy in our mind. Thank you for your joy everywhere. We swim in the ocean of the abundance of God. All is working well, Father. We decree and declare 
that your joy is for us. Your joy is our inheritance. Father, we thank you, almighty God. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6. Behold, I will bring to it health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. God essentially says it is time, you know, I said it off before, that you may have lost money. You may be lost opportunity. You may be you have bid, bidding for one contract or the other, it hasn't come to, to light yet. And because it is time now to get it back. Yeah, you may be looking for, you know, one idea or the other that hasn't pan through because it's time to make it work now. You know, you might be believing God for, you know, multiple streams of income. Where is it coming from? It's time to walk in now. So God says there is restoration of what you have lost. Income that you have lost, you are going to get back and more in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, with, 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 so this one begin to say, Father, oh, I swim in the abundance of prosperity and the security of God. I swim in the abundance of the prosperity and the security of God. I swim in the abundance of the prosperity and the security of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God, that I am in the overflow. Yes, I am in the overflow. I am in the overflow, Father. I thank you, all for restoration, Almighty God. Restoration and more. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your name, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. We pray. I want to look at that scripture again. Behold, I will bring to it health and healing. I want to read this scripture actually in the Amplified Version. Jeremiah 33, verse 6. Jeremiah 33, verse 6 in the Amplified. Let's look at the Amplified of it. I will lay upon it health and healing, and it will cure them. And I will read to them the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, stability, and truth. So now you see, prosperity is tied to peace. Shalom. Nothing broken, nothing missing. When we are at peace, we are secured. When we are secure, we are stable. Now, I want to show you something else. God said to me something some, some, some weeks back, in from book of genesis chapter chapter 15 verse 1 i want you to look at it i'll explain something to you about why peace is important notice here god says in Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 6 he said i will kill them and i will reveal i will reveal to them the abundance of peace which means the abundance that comes from peace the abundance that comes from peace, which means when peace rules in your life, automatically abundance will show up. And he's talking about that peace being prosperity, security, stability. And then you have truth here, which is peace, abundance of peace and truth. Genesis, Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your reward for obedience shall be very great. What obedience? Well, in the preceding chapter, chapter 14, Abraham had gone to fight the war with the five kings and won. Abraham met with Melchizedek when he was coming back. Melchizedek is a type of the Lord Jesus. Melchizedek, Melchizedek blessed Abraham. Melchizedek said, blessed be Abraham. Of the, of the Most High. And blessed be God who has given your enemies into your hands. Abraham, of his own volition, there was no law here about tithing or whatever. Abraham took a tenth of what he got from the spoil, gave it to Melchizedek. They had communion. There was bread and wine. It was Melchizedek that brought bread and wine to Abraham. It was Melchizedek that initiated uh, uh, communion. Bread and wine is a type of the communion. Melchizedek is a pre-incarnate of, of our Lord Jesus, made with Abraham and they had that wonderful fellowship together. 
Then, after that, the king of Jerusalem, no, the king of uh, Sodom, came to meet Abraham and said, well, you can take the, since you are the one that won this war, you are entitled to the spoils of war. Just, you know, give me, um, give me some of the spoils or something like that, right? And then Abraham said, I have lifted up my hands to God, the Most High. The same word, the same word that Mechizedek used to describe God the Father. Abraham used the same word and said, I have lifted up my hands to, to the Lord Almighty that will not take anything from you that, so that you will not say you are the one that have made Abraham rich. Just what it was, Abraham said. So Abraham did not allow even though it was legally it was legally within his right to lay claim to the prosperity or the boots or the spoils of war, he didn't do that. He said, take it. I don't want it to be said later that, oh, it's because Abraham won this war. That's how his riches came from the conquest of war. No, because I know that God has already promised that he is going to bless me through the war. Abraham remembered the covenant. He was walking within the covenant, the word of God. The next chapter, God showed up to him and said to him, Don't be afraid. I am enough for you. I am your shield and your reward shall be very great. So God said something to me here. God asked me the question and said, Why was the shield mentioned before the reward? Why was it that in the order of naming things, shield was mentioned first? And their reward. This word reward is the word Isaka. It is the word that means God is the one who pays you. God is the one who is your um, payroll master. God is the one who pays you. God is the one who gives you, who is your provider. And God says, Why do I have to mention shield before the reward? And I said, I don't know. God explained to me and said, Imagine somebody so much more. But the person could not sleep at night. The person is living in a country, possibly the country is war-torn. The person has all the money in the world. But the country where the person is living is war-torn. There's no peace there. The person is not secured because the person is afraid. God says to me, do you know that person is happy to sell everything he has and come to a country and even be a janitor or be a driver in a country where there was where there's peace, where there's security. And they say God says to me, that's the reason why I place security before reward. Because when you are in safety, when you can, when you are secured, then you can think and plan and make things happen. That's the reason why God made and shield here first before he mentioned reward because he knows he, knew, he knows that when you are in peace you are in that shalom nothing broken nothing missing then it is easy to flow prosper to flow from that space okay so Jeremiah chapter 36 is saying the law will reveal to you the abundance that comes from shalom the abundance that comes from the security of god the abundance that comes from the prosperity that only which only that God gives. Amen. So, Father, reveal to me in my heart, Lord, the abundance of prosperity, the abundance of security, the abundance of stability, the abundance of your truth in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you reveal to me. That's the prayer point. You know, the abundance that comes from peace that comes from shalom, that comes from prosperity, that comes from security, that comes from stability, that comes from your truth in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Almighty God, that I'm receiving revelation right from your throne room that will help me to understand the abundance that comes from your peace, prosperity, your security, your stability, and your truth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Restoration through repentance. Now, this one, you may have heard this one before when people say, if my people who are called by my name 
shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. This prayer is often called when people want to talk about the fact that some bad things are happening in the world and therefore it's because of wickedness and sin that those things have happened. And now, this one prayer it really is in twofold. Number one, in the church of God today, in the church of God today, I want us to pray for the church because it seems to me that our attention is divided. We have gone, we have, we have so much distraction going on in the church. So much distraction going on. So the prayer really is about, Father Lord, it is your church. Bring our attention back to Jesus. Bring our attention back to Jesus. Bring our attention back to Jesus. Right from the time even of of. Peter and Paul, when they were writing all these letters, you will notice in their uh, letters, in the scripture, they speak a lot about, do not be distracted. Peter, Paul, Apostle Paul said, after I am gone, false teachers shall arise. The challenge in the church is a lot of false teachers as well, people preaching things that are not okay, you know, directing attention to themselves instead of attention to God. I also pray to say, Father Lord, it is your church. You said you will build your church and the gates of hell cannot prevail over it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring the church of God into your hand. This is your church. It's your church. I pray for my brothers and I pray for my sisters all over the world. So anyone called by the name of Jesus, I pray, Father Lord, that you do a work in us. You will do a work in each one of us that our attention will be drawn back to the Lord Jesus. It will not be about personal name or whatever. It will be about the Lord Jesus. It will be about the Lord Jesus. Help us, Almighty God. Help us to have this humility of heart, to know that it is all about Jesus, so that our discussion, our planning our what we do will be about the glorification of the name of the lord lord i pray almighty god for my brothers i pray pray for myself i pray for my sisters i pray for the body of christ that lord you will do a work a new work right now you will do that lord you will raise up boys and girls men and women who truly hunger after you hunger after the things that you have done hunger after the things almighty god that you want to do Help lord raise among us raise among those leaders all over the world from one platform to the other from one nation to the other people who are really really hungry for the Lord people who are on fire for Jesus who are desirous of seeing changes Lord who are not who are not comfortable with the status quo, who wants to see a change in the world, who wants to see the name of the Lord spread abroad over all the mountains of this world. In the name of Jesus, from politics, Lord, even to education, from education to science, from science to the business world. I pray, Almighty God, that you right now begin to raise men and women, boys and girls. Lord, in every generation, Lord, people that are going to be bold Lord, to speak about you, to talk about you, that inventions will be created by these people, Almighty God, that the world will need. Lord, I thank you, Almighty God, that you will glorify yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Now begin to say to God, Lord, I am yielding myself. I am yielding myself, Lord, as a vehicle. I'm yielding myself, Lord, as a tool. I'm yielding myself, Lord, as the vehicle in your hands. In the, in the area where you have placed me. In the area where you have placed me. Let me be your hand. Let me be your feet. Let me be your tool. Let me be your leg. Let me be your voice. Let me be your presence. In the name of Jesus. Lord, whether I'm in the boardroom or I am I, I, or I am in the farmhouse. Lord, I Pray, oh God, that my perspective will be the perspective of heaven. That I will know that I am an ambassador and I represent a higher kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Another prayer point here, people of God, is, Lord, grant me boldness, O oh Lord. You know, Apostle Paul says something, he said, 
pray for me when he was going to meet a, a king i think it was king agrippa i was going to go to rome to go and to go and speak or maybe it was king festus he was saying pray for me that i will open my mouth to preach the gospel as i ought to what does that mean it means there are times when you get into certain circle and we can begin to get conflicted and said oh i don't want somebody to talk you know because people begin to get shy you know on prayer say father will grant you boldness that god will light up a fire in your boat you will light up a fire in your heart you will light up a fire in your bowel that when you need to speak and make manifest the name of the lord you will not keep quiet lord i pray in the name of jesus i pray for my brothers i pray for my sisters i pray for everyone almighty who is a believer who you are placed in one sphere or the other that when it is time for us to speak about the Lord Jesus, let the work that you have placed in our hands be so excellent that they cannot gain say. Let your people begin to be people of excellence, to deliver results that will draw people to the Lord. That people will say, let me know which God you serve. That these words will be like Joseph's and Daniel's in their generation. Lord, creating stuff, all of that the world needs, bringing solution to the marketplace. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, that Almighty God, we will be able to speak about God boldly. That is my prayer tonight in the name of Jesus. Not just evangelism in the normal way. I pray for a new way to evangelize. That it will be like Joseph and Daniel, Almighty God, that will create stuff that will change the world in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Grant us the humility of mind to see that this is where your mind is. You are looking for a generation of people that will change the world, that will bring the gospel into places where the gospel cannot reach in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something, people of God. You know, no matter how much we preach, some people will not come to the physical church. Some people will not come to your church. They will come there. Why? Because they just don't roll like that. But guess what? Guess, guess what is beautiful? Imagine, just imagine, imagine that you, you, in your field, whatever God is placed in your hand, you become so prominent, so, so, um, so, um, different that you are bringing solution to the table that, you know, King of Saudi will just come around and say, ah, come, let me, what are you doing there? Then you show them what they need to know. You tell them about Jesus. You know, uh, there's a man called, um, what's his name now? Joe Maxwell he says this to the Lord, says, you know, it's leadership. And he says they call, they used to call him from the UAE or other kind of. They say, "Oh, we we don't want all that religious stuff that you do. We know you are religious. You know you are a Christian. Come on, can you come and teach us leadership?" He said he will call go there and teach them about leadership from the Bible, but he will make it. He will present it in a way for them to for them to assimilate it. But they know where the source is coming from. I'm talking about something like I'm talking about something like that that will change the world. I want you to pray that prayer again for yourself. Say, Father, I am ready. I am willing. I am ready. I am willing. Help me. Help me to be a tool in your hand, Almighty God, to be able to bring solution to the marketplace that the people cannot gain. Say, the Bible says that you are the one who gave the spirit of wisdom. You gave them so wisdom in the building of the ark to certain people. You are the one you with that wisdom but we have something better than that we have jesus we have jesus christ the bible calls him the fount of wisdom all of the wisdom in this world is is is, is domicile in jesus christ and we are completing him so now father we know we have your wisdom. We have received your wisdom. We walk in your wisdom. Lord, I pray for myself and I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for everyone, Almighty God, that Lord, we begin to yield ourselves to your leading, to your leading, to your encouragement. That will be creators, not consumers. That will be able to create spread stuff that will change our world. That will bring many people to the kingdom. Lord, we thank you now. Lord, we give you praise. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. The last prayer point here is about pray. We pray for the church. We pray for change in the church. I want us to now pray for the world. I want us to pray for the world. If you look at um, the economies of the world, you look at the political uh, um, class, there is a lot of confusion. When you look at the political class, you're thinking, where are the people? Where are men and women of caliber, men that really can hold their place? You don't see much. But also, we believers have chosen to sit on the back burner. We don't want to talk, but that's not the way it works. We also need to get involved in this politics. We need to get involved in, this, in, in things in the world so that we can be part of people that are shaping policies. But the last prayer point I want to pray here is about praying for the world 
praying for the US, praying for the UK, praying for Nigeria, praying for the whichever country God is in your heart, where the leaders are there. Because see, the Bible says that when a, a, a king that is a wicked king comes into power, the people suffer. Which means if you have the wrong person in that place, it will affect the population. And I want us to pray to say, Father Lord, we commit all the leaders of the world, the leaders of nations of the world into your hands. Then with those of them who know the Lord, we thank God for them, empower them, embody them, just like we've prayed earlier. For those who do not know Jesus, I pray for supernatural encounters. Pray for supernatural encounters in the name of Jesus for these ones. That every one of these people, in one way or the other, in your own agenda, they will encounter the love of God. They will encounter the grace of God. They will encounter the might of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, today we stand together. We frustrate the tokens of liars. We frustrate the power of, of the enemy. We declare, oh God, that whatever the devil planned, not in our generation, we refuse it. We refuse it to not happen. We declare, oh my God, that the agenda of God alone will be established on the earth. That the timing that you have ordained in it, from eternity past, that is the only thing that will stand. The devil might run all over the place, but Lord, we thank you that we, it cannot win because we have seen the end of the story that we always win at last. Thank you that, oh Lord, in you we have victory. We thank you, Almighty God. We stand now, Father, in the gap for the leaders of the nations of the world, that Almighty God, these ones, oh Lord, that are that don't those ones are in the middle, they don't know what to do. We pray for them to be converted into your kingdom. Those ones who have put their hands with in, in cohort with the enemy, Father, we pray for repentance. We pray for repentance, Lord, because you do not want anyone to perish, that they will repent to know Almighty God, that they are going down the pathway. Lord, Father, I thank you, Lord, for the work that you have done. Father, we give you praise and we thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah.